Hello everybody and welcome to this amazing game of Resident Evil Resistance. Through this guide you should understand the basics of how to play Survivor. You'll learn what you need to do to pull your weight so that you can maximize not only your gameplay but enjoy yourself a bit more through tough situations. This guide however will not cover any one specific Survivor. We instead will be covering tips that will help you for all Survivors in general. As you get to learn your character you can adjust your strategy accordingly and likely we'll have some guides on each individual character as we go along. Resistance is a game provided with Resident Evil 3 Remake. Though it is a different game, it seems that developers are treating this like an extra mode for Resident Evil 3. That means that if you take the time to play the remake, then you'll actually get pretty accustomed to the basics of combat and inventory management in Resistance. Even if you don't like single player games, it will be worth your while to play Resident Evil 3 to prepare you for Resistance. Keep in mind the controls are not exactly the same, but it's good enough to brush your survivor skills up in an offline setting. This guide will not really teach you these basics, so jump on over and at least play a little bit there. So first we'll introduce ourselves to the seven different survivors. Each survivor has a specialty that allows them to excel in certain categories. Every survivor can wield all weapons and perform all tasks, but are just slightly different. This includes movement speed and base health. So keep in mind if you feel like you're dying often as a certain character, or move slower than others, it's probably because you have lower health or lower movement speed based on the character you've chosen. Knowing your specific character is vital to your success, and every character will have four different skills. Two of them are passive, which just give you set bonuses based on the variant that you choose, and two are active. One is your ultimate ability, known as the fever skill, and the other is just a common use personal skill. Each skill has different variants that unlock through level. They primarily keep the skill the same, but give you different benefits. For example, Tyrone has a kick personal skill, and his three variants change how frequently he can kick, how his kick may affect his personal stats, such as breaking doors open faster, or he can increase the damage of his kick at the cost of having a higher cooldown. Valerie is the healing support character. Support characters come with two additional inventory slots, which is a nice bonus. Valerie focuses on healing and providing support through explosives and debuffing allies. Being a vital character, Valerie also has the lowest health of the game at 1100, so be careful. January is the damage hacker. She has the ability to hack mastermind cameras and gain unique armory bonuses. Though she doesn't provide direct combat damage to creatures, she is the strongest control against the masterminds that focus through cameras. Though classified as damage, Jan works more like a support being able to support her allies by limiting the mastermind behind the camera. January sports standard base health at about 1200. Tyrone is the tank brawler. Tyrone sports the highest health at 1,400 and specializes in taking the lead. He's good at opening doors faster than anyone else and providing a defensive buff to his allies. He can also perform a kick to knock zombies away from allies that are in need. As a brawler, he'll also start with a 2x4 melee weapon instead of a mup, which means that they'll be limited to melee combat unless he purchases a firearm from the armory. Samuel is the damage brawler. He has increased health topping at 1,300. His focus is melee damage, and he's the most devastating character when it comes to fighting creatures with melee weapons. He boasts some of the highest damage overall. His abilities allow him to enter a boxing stance to dish out damage with his fists, and have unique benefits such as self-healing or even more damage. Though he has little utility to help the team, typically annihilating any threats in his way is his way of support. Martin is the trap support. He primarily stuns, halts, and controls zombies through various traps. As a support, he can carry two extra items as well. Not only that, but he's the only character capable of disarming traps with a unique interaction. Simply by standing by a trap, he'll be given a prompt. By doing it this way, he'll prevent the effect of the trap from even happening. Unlike if you were to shoot the trap, it may still explode or cause a slightly lesser effect. Becca is the damage firearm specialist. She's one of the fastest characters in the game, with her base speed being higher than most other characters, and she also shares the lowest health with Valerie at 1100. All of her skills essentially have to do with firearms, making her the most lethal gun toter in the game. She can utilize any gun efficiently and provide special benefits to all guns, including the special weapons. The special weapons dropped by the supply zombies typically should be given to Becca, as that is a wise strategy. 
Finally, we have Jill, the damage combat specialist. She functions just as she does from Resident Evil 3 Remake, making her a very versatile character. She's pretty much a jack of all trades, being able to perform a little bit of every other survivor. She has good melee and range damage. She is able to even open doors slightly faster. And she has a good arsenal that allows her to take control of any situation. With this, I suggest learning a couple of characters at once. That way, if your main character is selected by someone else, you have the ability to fall back on another. This doesn't even cover the equipment you'll unlock and place on each character, improving certain parameters. Since that can go pretty deep, we'll save that for its own guide. All you need to know is your character can equip up to four items with a total of 20 equipment points. It is wise to save up and unlock all equipment items before you attempt to get cosmetic chests. It'll be easier for you in the long run to have everything on on hand for combat and then just get your cosmetics through dailies and leveling up. It is a massive investment for the equipment and yes, all equipment is good equipment. Masterminds cause a great shift in strategy when playing against them, so when you do finally pick your character and jump in, make sure you pay attention to who you're playing against. Annette and Daniel are both creature-based characters, so make sure you have high melee damage and some good range support. When you go against Alex, she'll have tons of traps and infection. Nikolai will be pure firearms, so make sure you pick up a gun even if you are a melee character. And Spencer is an oddball as he can be almost anything, but he won't be a master at any of them. However, it's likely he'll lock doors at a very fast rate, so having Tyrone to kick them open or just making sure someone with high kicking power opens the doors for you. But these types of tips will help alter your strategy before you get in, regardless of which character you play. So once you picked your character and you've begun the game, you'll start in this area here, which is typically a safe room. Make sure that you go to the armory, which is the chest looking thing, and purchase better equipment. The MUP and 2x4 are not that great and are very weak for what they are. You could manage with them if you improved your skill, but for starters, it is always a wise idea to immediately go to the armory and purchase gear to prepare you for area 1. The gear within the armory is actually random. For guns, you'll either get a quick draw or Matilda, and for melee weapons, you'll either get a bat or torch. You'll unlock access to more weapons in further areas, and as you progress to the next areas, you'll also gain access to the other item you did not have access to in area one. But your starter gear is going to be random, and whether or not it's what you want, you have to deal with what you're given. Next, we'll cover tips on what to do while you play and how the games work. You'll begin the game with five minutes on the clock. Every time something negative happens to you, such as taking damage, getting bit, hit by traps, or even shot by firearms, it will all reduce the timer. However, doing positive things, such as killing zombies, breaking traps, destroying cameras the mastermind is in, will all provide you bonus time. It is very important that you do what you can to provide yourself with as much bonus time as possible so that you have more time to scavenge for resources and you can work your way through each area without much stress. In area one, you'll be looking for three key items, which you turn in at the elevator door. While searching for keys, you also want to keep an eye out for the tons of resources scattered throughout the area. Plenty of players leave behind very useful items and the especially hard to see credits. As much as this game is timing, you also need to make sure that you stock up as much as you can as the mastermind is trying to drain your resources. As long as you maintain a good upkeep, you shouldn't run out of ammo or credits to buy items you may need. Combat itself is simple, but has some depth to it. You'll see damage numbers when you hit a zombie to know how much damage you're dealing. Depending on where you strike the creature, you deal more or less damage. There are four zones to hit, which are the outer, the limbs, the center, and the head. Outer would include things such as hands and feet, dealing the least amount of damage. Limbs would be arms, legs, shoulders, that would still be a little less than normal. And then finally you have center, which is the center of the body or torso itself. Finally, headshots will turn the number red to indicate a weak spot. Headshots deal the most damage and they also cause the most knockback. Additionally, you can crit, which is also represented by a red number. Crits deal bonus damage and knockback. This can apply not only to body shots of any kind, but also to the head. But since the head is already red damage, the only way you're going to know you got a critical headshot is if the damage just looks bigger than your last headshot. This also applies to melee weapons just as it does guns, so hitting the arms of zombies will deal less damage with melee weapons than it would hitting the torso. And where the melee weapon comes in contact first 
makes the difference, so if a zombie's arms are up, you'll likely get a body shot, dealing quite a bit of damage. Keep that in mind. There's also reticle damage with guns. When you're aiming a weapon and you don't move, the reticle for most guns will focus and close. Once focused, your weapon will deal additional damage with higher crit chance and have better knockback. Each gun has a different focus speed, but when conserving ammo or trying to stop zombies from biting allies, aiming the reticle can make all the difference. There are a few tips for combat that would be pretty important, and one of them is dealing with infection. Infection and resistance is Resident Evil's poison. Once infected, you will occasionally cough, which prevents you from performing any actions, deals damage to you, and drains 5 seconds off the timer. You can get infected through a couple of ways. Zombies that claw or bite you will increase your infection level, or if you're standing within a poisonous gas, it will gradually fill the meter. Zombies can be infectious themselves, so just standing by them will infect you. You'll know infectious when you see the purple gas. As infection rises, you can see the biohazard meter above your health increase. Once it fills up, you increase your level of infection by one. The maximum is three. The difference between each level of infection is the frequency by which you cough. The higher the level, the more you will cough, becoming a nuisance to you as it not only prevents you from acting, but ultimately massively drains the time. Use blue herbs to cleanse your infection to zero. Even if you don't have a full level of infection, you can preemptively cleanse it so that you don't get interrupted if you feel you're going to be in a tough fight. Cleansing also takes resources, as there are only so many blue herbs available in the game. If you're strapped for resources, consider staying infected until you get a higher level of infection. At level 1, you'll cough once every 25 seconds. At level 2, you'll cough every 12 seconds, and level 3 is every 7 seconds. You may be able to manage a lower level infection without cleansing it, but once you're level 3, consider cleansing as soon as possible. You can also see an ally's level of infection as well by the way that the character looks. The closer they look to a zombie, the more infected they are. Once their skin has all the blisters and they look like the walking dead, you know they're level 3 and need a blue herb. Consider trying to share it with them. In Area 2, you'll be tasked with finding the security guard zombie, defeating him, and using that key he drops to unlock all the security consoles. The key he drops can only go to one person, and that one person will have to be the one to unlock the consoles. You could drop the key if you picked it up, and you know who has the key by looking at your allies' icons on the top left. Here, if you have the key but are having difficulty using the consoles, or feel you are a better support for the person who could be doing the consoles, then drop the key for someone else. Remember that Yorick is also an armored guard, and there's a lot of strategies to keep him alive, and he's one of the tankiest zombies there is. Use flashbangs, grenades, explosives, or anything to stun him so you can get some easy shots. He's vulnerable on the back and the head. In Area 3, you'll have to search for three bio cores to break. You can identify the right ones by looking up for a glowing pillar of light. Bio cores have high health, take reduced damage from long ranged attacks, and explosives. In order to deal a lot of damage with guns, you'll have to get kind of close. You'll notice the damage difference as you get closer. Melee weapons are probably the best as they deal the most damage at the least cost of resources and they deal that damage faster than guns do. So have someone with a melee weapon start whacking the bio core and support them from a distance as to not have everyone run into any traps the mastermind may be placing. The primary difference between guns and melee weapons in general is going to be the fact that melee weapons deal a lot more damage in a single swing and the resources they consume can be quite a lot less than guns. Guns are much safer and keep you away from zombies, especially infectious ones. So guns keep your allies safe, help keep your time up, and allow you to deal with threats at a distance, but when it comes to bio cores, melee weapons are the way to go. If you're struggling with resources on ammunition and feel like you're not going to have enough ammo to destroy a bio core, consider just picking up a melee weapon and finishing it off. There are a few final general tips to give when playing Survivor. First, stay alert control the room. Masterminds will often turn lights off and close doors to hinder your progress or separate you from your allies in order to take you down. Make sure to turn the lights back on by finding light switches on the wall, and stand between open doorways so the mastermind can't close them. As long as you're there, they'll have to get you out of the way before they can lock that door on you. If you have an objective you need to finish in a room, destroy the camera to protect yourself from further spawning zombies or any traps. 
Zombies like to fake being dead, and when you shoot one over, they'll be overly dramatic. And what they'll do is try to grab you as you walk by. To make sure a zombie has died, just verify and look up that a plus number has shown up. If numbers are going crazy because things are getting a little hectic, just shoot the corpse one more time or stab it with your knife. By doing so, if a damage number appears, they're still alive. Then, just continue to shoot until the damage numbers stop showing up. When a mastermind uses a bioweapon, it's usually advised to run away. The only one that you're going to want to have to fight is Yataveo the plant. The plant is the easiest one to defeat, and all bioweapons can be defeated, but the amount of resources it takes to do that can be a bit much. Yataveo is weak to fire, so make sure that you use fire to not only save your allies, but also defeat the plant quickly, as the plant is just there to waste your time. As for the other bioweapons, do your best to just avoid taking damage and run away when possible. Don't forget that any of the humanoid tyrants can also be stunned by flashbangs to give you and your team time to run away. Nemesis, Tyrant, and Birkin can all be temporarily halted through the use of flashbangs and explosives. Communicate to teammates using various emotes from the cosmetic screen. Telling them to go a certain way or making noise can get their attention if you're trying to either swap weapons, give items, or point out dangers such as traps or zombies behind the door. And finally, stick with the team, but keep your distance. Masterminds benefit greatly from hitting multiple survivors at once with traps and explosives. So, as you follow players around, stay a distance behind them. Don't try to run through the door with everybody else in a rush. Let someone go first, let them take the damage, and then continue to support them afterwards. You can't imagine the amount of times I've personally defeated teams trying to rush through a door altogether. With that out of the way, the best advice anyone could give you is just to keep trying. You'll always improve by simply playing the game, and as you get used to your character, you'll learn how to handle them and new ways to implement new styles of gameplay. But with that, that's all I've got to teach you until we come to this character-specific guides. There should also be an equipment guide on the site, as there is a lot of depth to this game. So just do your best, practice, and try to figure out if you do get defeated, what you could have done better. With that out of the way, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. And as always, good game.